Hi, my name is Paul Sargent, and welcome once again to AP Euro Bit by Bit. So let's get started. But the most powerful symbol of Louis XIV's rule was the Palace of Versailles, a massive building project to create well, to expand what was essentially a hunting lodge. Now, we're not talking about a little, you know, shack. It was a pretty large hunting lodge. But in a swamp, changing a hunting lodge into the greatest palace in all of Europe to show off his power. And he used it as a trap for the nobility. Because in order to gain royal favors, the nobility had to move to Versailles, get away from their centers of power throughout France, and they had to cater to the every whim of Louis XIV. He had them doing very menial tasks, and there was a hierarchy of tasks so that those he favored would get better things, like giving him his shirt to get dressed with in the morning. So the nobility had to engage in all of these menial tasks in which they really attended to all of the needs of the king in a way that servants would. And they jockeyed for position to be the ones to having the better jobs. Not only that, but he designed the entire backyard, a two-mile expanse, with lots of hiding places, lots of secret enclaves where people could get away and scheme or have affairs or stuff like that. And he had an entire series of spies that listened to everything that was going on, reported back to him so that he had dirt on everybody. And yet they had to cater to him if they wanted their family name to continue. And then to keep them happy, there were lots of recreational games, there were hunts, there were jousts, there were all kinds of things going on to keep the nobility entertained. But in what I think is maybe the greatest example of royal power at Versailles, he had oranges, which don't grow in France, but he had 500 orange trees that were planted in planters that were, that were wheeled on the bottom. And they were kept in a greenhouse when it was too cold to be outside. When the sun came out, it was warm. He had an entire army of servants wheel these orange trees outside so they could soak up the sun and grow. And then they were wheeled back in at night. And this was an over and over and over uh, ritual so that when the big banquets came, he could serve fresh oranges grown on the property. Now that's power. He also controlled religion because he saw himself at the center of the Roman church and he was a very devout Catholic himself. He realized at some point that the, that the religious freedom that was granted by his grandfather Henry IV was not going to maintain a unified France and so he declared in 1685 the Edict of Fontainebleau. In this edict, he revoked the rights of Huguenots to practice their Calvinist religion, and they were to be persecuted. And so, and so almost 200,000 Huguenots immigrated from France, leaving for places like England, the colonies, and all of this to enrich them with their talents, their knowledge, and their beliefs. He also had economic policies, and these were aided by the, his finance minister, Jean-Baptiste Colbert, who was a big fan of mercantilism. Again, mercantilism is the idea that colonies exist for the benefit of the home country, and colonies enrich the home country by providing raw materials that can be manufactured in the home country and then sold back to the colonies. The goal of Colbert was economic self-sufficiency for France. So, putting up protective tariffs, by uh, supporting uh, national industries, by doing these sorts of things, he tried to make France completely dependent on, well, France and absolutely nobody else. Now the good thing about this is that by 1683, France was the leading industrial power in Europe. They were producing all kinds of goods, and their exports far outweighed their imports, which is typically a good thing in a mercantilist economy. But there were weaknesses to the whole problem. The biggest weakness of the mercantilist policy was the fact that Louis XIV 
near the end of his reign, engaged in a series of wars. And at the height of these wars, the cost of the wars doubled the total amount of income being brought in by all the taxation throughout France. This was unsustainable. And so, it led to some real problems financially for France, which would play out over the next hundred years. Now, Louis XIV's wars are a series of controversies that still are argued by historians today. There are three main wars that come out of this. The first is the Dutch War, the second is the War of the League of Augsburg, and the third is the War of the Spanish Succession. And through it all, France not only created the dominant army in all of France, but they created a situation where coalitions of countries had to gather together to fight the power of France. Now, ultimately, these wars, and I don't want to get into the wars themselves so much here, but ultimately the, the effect of the wars was multifold. Number one, France exerted its authority and became the major military power of Europe. Secondly, by the end of the War of the Spanish Succession, France had put a Bourbon monarch on the Spanish throne contrary to the, the, contrary to the desires of every other power in Europe. And thirdly, the wars totally bankrupted France. So what are the lessons to be learned from Louis XIV? Well, absolutism as an idea creates a strong nation. The idea of being French, united behind the Sun King, Louis XIV, became a very powerful force that made France very successful. But as his rule continued, France and Louis XIV as the embodiment of France had no restraints on his power. He could do anything he wanted. No one wanted to oppose him. And when he started doing that, he started making decisions which were based not on the good of the people, but based on the power of France itself and the maintenance of the dynasty of his family, the Bourbon family. And those problems created some long-term problems for France, which would lead to some real problems in 1789. So anyway, there's a very quick overview of Louis, Louis XIV. There are lots of other resources out there to uh, get some more information, but I like giving the basics. So anyway, my name is Paul Sargent. This is AP Euro Bit by Bit. Thank you so much for tuning in, and please, and please subscribe so that you can get notified when I post new videos. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.